We've been I'm doing a series, Transformation, Transfiguration, Translations for a while. And I tell you, we've been on transformation through the written word. I, I, for a while, it just keeps getting stronger and stronger. In uh, Romans 12, 2, it says, Be not uh, conformed to the image of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. And we just to reiterate a little bit, we've been sharing from last week, out of Second Peter 1.16, we're going to go back to just, just the power of the written word and what happens when you get it in your spirit. We said that faith is, according to Hebrews 11.1, 1, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is a substance, a spiritual substance, just like anything in the natural. I mean, uh, Anything you see, a table, a chair, is a substance. Well, a spiritual substance of faith is so powerful in its reality. Amen? And what's exciting is that you can perceive it. And faith is something that, again, it's something that is a spiritual reality. It's inside your spirit. Amen? And it causes you to know things. And it causes you to see things. It causes you to know through the mind of your spirit. We've shared this, this many times we've shared this, but it bears repetition. Your physical man is simply a type of your spirit man. Just like you have a physical mind, your spirit has a mind. Drew Meyer has good teaching on this. And through the different scriptures in Ephesians talks about the mind of your spirit. So, in the mind of your spirit, you come to know things, glory to God. Just like in the physical, your physical mind, your natural mind comes to know that one plus one is two. How does it know that? Well, it's, a, it's born of a substance that causes you to know, amen? How does your, the mind of your spirit know? Well, it just does because it's created to know, hallelujah. I tell people all the time that God has given you a knower, Amen? Praise God. How do you know? You know because he's given you a knower. Glory to God. And the knower is the mind of your spirit. The word of God goes into your spirit, renews the mind of your spirit, then it translates to this mind, praise God, so what you think about in what you believe is, is really you enter into the mind of Christ. And your spirit has eyes, the eyes of your spirit. The Bible talks in Ephesians 1, 16 to 23. And the entrance of his word giveth light to the eyes of your spirit that you see into the spirit realm. And we're talking a little bit about that today. But then, then you have the ears of your spirit. The ears of your spirit. In that, how many times you tell someone, you know, I heard God say this to me. I heard God say this to me. Well, yes, you have. You heard it not audibly, most likely through your natural ears, but through the ears of your spirit. Glory to God. Uh, you know, your, your spirit has an ability to, to, to smell things in the spirit realm, the aroma of Jesus. Also, it can, it can uh, I'll never forget, uh, I, in the spirit realm, sometimes you enter in and you can smell things that really some sexual, so you can smell it in the, in the, through the nostrils of your spirit. It's amazing, and you can touch God through the hand of your spirit. It's amazing, that reality. God is spirit, and we want to enter in, amen, to this reality, because the more you enter in to walking in the spirit by your spirit, the more exciting it is, because that's when Jesus is real. Because Jesus is spirit. You can't touch God with, uh, you know, your physical hand, you can't touch God with your natural mind. That's religion, amen? And unfortunately, a lot of times, people, they can get excited when there is a natural phenomena in the sense of, and I'm not against this type of thing, but sometimes you can go to church where, you know, there's, there's smoke going up here and lots show going up here and this going up here, and, and, and that's okay. But the bottom line is this, I want to see the smoke of God himself, like in Isaiah, glory to God through, 
hallelujah, the eyes of my spirit. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not really so into a natural smoke that's a representation of it. Amen? I'm not into representations of Jesus. I want Jesus. Amen? I want to see Jesus. I don't want to see a light show. I want to see the light within him, praise God, through the eyes of my spirit. I know that's strong. That's not putting down that type of worship. But I'm telling you, there's something deeper, amen, to where I tell you what, when you have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'm going to tell you something. There's not going to be a light show in the natural. There's not going to be smoke coming out of your house. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. You've got to enter into the spirit, praise God. All right. Oh, that was for free. Okay. But this is what we're talking about. See, when we're talking about entering in to change through the word of God, there's nothing like it. There is nothing like it in the world when, when someone tells you that, man, you know, you've got this prognosis in the natural. And it says, you know, you're not going to make it. And you say, I've got inside information inside this book, and I know I will. I don't think I will. I don't hope I will. I know I will. Glory to God. There's nothing like that in the world. Praise God. Nothing like it in the world. There's nothing like when you just enter into your quiet time or in, in worship corporately, praise God, and man, you just sense the face of Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Nothing like it. Now, in the Old Testament, we shared this last Sunday, but I want to share it again as a foundation of what we're talking about. In 2 Kings 2, Elisha said, I want a double portion of your spirit to Elijah. Elijah said, if you see me when I leave, it will be granted you. Meaning that if you see me in the spirit when I leave, all the sons of the prophets, they were around, but they didn't see what Elisha saw. Elisha saw the chariots of fire. He saw Elijah be taken up, and then the mantle fell to him. See, it's one thing to say, I believe it. It's another thing to believe it to the point where you know it and can see it. I'm going to say that again. It's one thing to say, yeah, I believe it. It's another thing to come to the point where you know it to the place that's going to come to pass, and you see it. And see, that's when... Things happen, praise God. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings 6, when Elisha's servant Gehazi was judged with leprosy because of his sin of covetousness, Elisha had a new servant. He woke up, and they're surrounded by the Syrian army under death. And he comes to Elisha, and said, man, I don't know, I didn't know what I was signing up for when I became your servant. There's two of us, there's this whole army surrounding us. Elisha's response was this, those who are with us are more than those that are with them. Eli the servant's probably thinking, what are you talking about? But you see, Elisha saw something that his servant didn't. So here's his prayer, and this is a good prayer for all of us. He said, Open up his eyes that he might see re the reality of the spirit realm. This is what Ephesians 1, 16 to 23 is all about. That the eyes of our spirit, the mind of our understanding might be opened up that we might know and see according to the spirit realm. So his eyes were opened up and he saw a myriad of angels, a myriad of chariots of fire in the spirit realm. And he went from a place of thinking they were going to be destroyed to a place of confidence in deliverance. And so they were. Does it make a difference to be able to know that you know through the written word of God and to see into the spirit realm through the written word of God? It makes all the difference. Again, your relationship with Jesus will be directly correlative to what you know and see in your spirit according to the development of the mind of your spirit and the eyes of your spirit through the written word of God. All right, now let me share this before we get into 2 Peter 1.16. If you look to each of the gifts of the spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, 
you know, the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, gifts of tongues, tongues, uh, interpretation of tongues, gift of faith, gift of miracles, gifts of healing. If you, if you look at all of those, each one of them is a outward correlative of an inward grace. What if, let's, let's give an example. For example, the gift of faith is one of the nine gifts of the Spirit. Well, what's that correlate to inwardly? Your inward faith. Every person here has the same measure of faith, Romans 12, 3. So we all have inward faith. What's the gift of faith? Sometimes our faith has not been developed to a certain point where we can believe for something we need to believe for. So the gift of the Spirit it comes to make up for that which is not yet cultivated. Smith Wigglesworth said that many times when he was praying for somebody that was dead, his faith would take him to a certain point, but then he knew when that certain point stopped, it wasn't sufficient to raise that person, and then the gift of the Spirit would come, and it would take over, and he would enter into the faith of God that created the universe and 100% of the time, that person would rise. Okay? So, if we're talking about seeing into the spirit realm through the written word of God. And I know this is strong, but boy, I tell you, this is exciting to me. Psalm 119, 130 says, The entrance of his word giveth light, causes us to see. Ephesians 1, 16 to 23 talks about, again, the eyes of our spirit being opened. Well, so the inward fruit is that through our spirit, we're able to sense the Lord, just like we did in worship, amen? We sense Jesus, amen? And glory to God, you, you enter into, uh, man, when, when Jesus comes, you can just sense him right there. You can see the, his glory shining, amen? Glory to God. But then the discerning of spirits, one of the nine gifts of the spirit, is when God, again, through the Holy Spirit outwardly coming, he causes you to see in and above what the eyes of your spirit have entered into through cultivation. And, and you, might, you might see angels. You might see Jesus himself. You can see demonic spirits at times. I know someone there was sharing a testimony that, uh, and certainly, unless you have to be careful, every time there's cancer, it doesn't mean a demon is, is there, but uh, there is praying for, this uh, man was praying for a young lady in her 30s. She had two children. He prayed for her twice at a healing revival mean, type of meeting, and nothing seemed to work. She was in the very last stages of this cancer, lung cancer. And, uh, he, the third time he prayed, and they would have to carry her on a stretcher down to the front of the auditorium where he was holding the meeting. He, he saw this monkey-like spirit through the gift of the discerning of spirits. On this thing, he commanded to leave, and the thing fell off of her. He literally just walked right out the door. And uh, she got up. And just, he said, I feel 100% better. Well, you couldn't tell. She didn't look any better, you know. And I believe it was in three weeks she had gained 30 pounds and she was completely whole. And she told her doctor exactly what happened, praise God. But see, that's a discerning of spirit. Say, well, that's exciting, amen? But see, what's equally exciting is when you understand that every time you get in this word, the eyes of your spirit, praise God, are becoming stronger so you can sense Jesus more and more and see into the spirit realm the glory of God according to what's written. So that's what we're going to enter into now. All right. So go with me, if you would, to 2 Peter. Glory to God, 1.16. And here's what's interesting to me. I don't know about you, but uh, when I came to Jesus, you know, I, I really needed to know it was real. I didn't grow up in a Christian family. I didn't, I didn't know anything, really, uh, about the gospel. <clears throat> and... Uh, but as I was seeking God, I just sensed a void in my heart, as many of you have. <clears throat> and when you were drawn by the Lord, you knew it was real. Amen? And, you know, I'm somebody that if it wasn't real, I wouldn't care two cents about it. I don't care if everybody in 
said, I believe this. If I didn't believe it was real, I wouldn't, you know. And I know when I, I sensed that void in my heart, I looked into Islam. I remember reading the autobiography of Malcolm X when I was in high school and looked into all this existentialism, all this stuff. And the last thing I thought was real was Jesus, really. Because when I went to church, if there was anything that wasn't real, it was church. The church, really, where I went to. It was a religious deal. I mean, hypocrisy. And it was like, man, worshiping statues and stuff. And it was like, really, I, it wasn't real. And you know, the statues didn't give life. And I could sense that. And uh, so, I, you know, but then Jesus began to come to me. And, and, and I mean, just draw me in, in, in different ways. And I'm thinking, I mean, I never expected Jesus to be real. But in my heart, I began to see that he really did. Only The Bible says only a fool says in his heart there is no God. That there was a God. And man, he sent his son to die for me. And all of you have had that experience. Amen. Now, God wants us to enter into, man, a reality day by day that it's just really, really real. And I know we know it's real, but God wants to accentuate things. Amen? I mean, if Jesus would tell you tonight at 7 o'clock, come back here and I'm going to appear to you, how many of you could come back? I would, you'd invite people. Why? Because you'd want to enter into that. Well, praise God, he is here. You can't see him in the natural, but the more you enter into the spirit through the word, and we're talking about the voice of God as well and Shekinah glory of God, but I tell you, it just gets better and better. All right, so that's 2 Peter 1.16. This is what Peter's saying. He says, we have not uh, followed cunningly devised fables. Hallelujah. When we made known unto you the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But were eyewitnesses of his majesty. 2 Peter 1, 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the most excellent glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. Now, he's of course alluding to the experience he had on the Mount of Transfiguration. Him, James, and John. Right? They were on the Mount of Transfiguration. <clears throat> and, man, you talk about reality. And Jesus is saying, I'm going to show you what happens when I pray. Luke chapter 9 says, as he prayed, his face lit up when you put Matthew 17, Luke 9, and Mark 8 together. We always share the scripture, interpret scripture. He, he's praying according to Luke 9, and, man, his face lights up like the sun. Matthew 17. And these guys are just, you want scripture on the rationale of, of falling under the power? These guys just, man, they just go under the power. They, they, it says they fell as dead men. And they wake up, and Moses and Elijah are talking with Jesus in a glorified state. And Peter doesn't know what to say. He said, let's make a tabernacle for Moses, Elijah, and you, Lord. And, and that wasn't well received by Jesus. And uh, so Moses and Elijah disappear. And then these guys go into a cloud, a bright cloud. I mean, we're talking heavy duty, right? You see Jesus' face light up as he's praying like the noonday sun. You go under the power of the Spirit, come up, see Moses and Elijah with Jesus. And then they disappear. And now you're under this cloud, this is bright cloud. And then you hear God Almighty speak audibly. This is my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. Hear him, right? And then it disappears. I mean, we're talking reality, right? Can you imagine the devil saying, you know, to Peter, James, and John, as they're coming down the mountain, you know, God's not real. Jesus isn't the Messiah. They say, you, you know, you got to be kidding me, right? And so he's recounting this, this amazing experience. Glory to God. And... It was amazing. And God wants us to enter into experiences like that, but first and foremost, we have to see that there's something even more powerful. I don't know, there's times, have you ever asked this, it's like, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> man, I wish I could go to heaven like Jesse Duplantis did and spend an hour there. You know what I'm saying? <coughs> excuse me. 
Or like Keith Moore one day just had a vision of heaven. Or I wish I could have that, God. You ever do that? And, and God says, I, and I remember I was saying, Lord, I, I would be nice. And um, I'd rather go there than Florida. You know what I'm saying? Florida's nice. Bahamas are nice. But just one half-hour deal, right? And, and, I've said, and God said to me, I, you know, there's something even better than that. Now, if he wants to take you up and do that, wonderful. And that's when you enter in to really seeing me whenever you want to through the eyes of your spirit. Now, that's strong. I just, that's because that's what he told Thomas. It would have been better for you if you would have just been believe, believe me than to say, I have to put my finger in your nail prints. Didn't Jesus say that? Well, why would it have been better? Because when you learn to walk by your spirit, you can see Jesus whenever you want. That's strong. Now, I believe in visions, and I want more visions. And I, 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 want, you know, I want to enter into experiences. We're going to talk about when we talk about translation. But the bottom line is, first and foremost, is when you enter in to this type of relationship with the Lord. It's amazing. Praise God. So here's what's exciting. Peter says, okay, I had this experience, but there's even something better. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, where unto you do well to take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place, unto the day dawn and the day star rise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but the holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So he's saying this. There's something that's more sure than even the vision, even going under that cloud. There's something more sure than the audible voice that I heard. How, how can he say that? Well, he can say that because inward faith is always more sure than, than anything that came outward. Now, that was sure, wasn't it? He knew it was God that spoke. But how can it be more sure? See, when it's in you by revelation, you've been branded. And it can't leave. A man that's had a vision, as opposed to a man that's entered into revelation... It's more sure when you enter into the revelation of the written word. Glory to God. He's saying, again, it's more sure in the sense, man, you didn't have to have, I mean, you saw that. It wasn't like you had to say, man, well, I believe that God's there. He was there. You see what I'm saying? When you get something inwardly, man, just like with Thomas, he said it would have been better if you had just believed. Now, again, this was sure. This experience was amazing that he had. But see, it was outwardly to inwardly. The devil probably still said, ah, that was just a dream. See, he still had to get it by faith. I've had people that I prayed for, I mean, through words of knowledge, whatever. And I mean, just amazing manifestations. And I mean, it was sure. I mean, I'm thinking a lady, I mean, just that was in a wheelchair, stages of cancer. I mean, she, she couldn't lift her hand, and she was walking. And I mean, Jesus came down like in a cloud. And that was, that was real. But then, see, she still has to receive, the, okay, and, and, her, and she struggled with unworthiness. But now, next time, I went back the next day. A friend of hers that was there was telling everybody about it, and she's struggling. She's back in the wheelchair saying, I'm unworthy. You see, that, see some, there's one thing that came outwardly, which is good. But you have to, you still, even if it comes outwardly, you still have to enter into standing inwardly. Amen? And believing it. So this is, this is strong stuff what we're talking about. But it's exciting when we really understand the power of what the word does in the context of knowing this and in the context of seeing into the spirit realm, especially seeing God who is spirit. Go with me to John 3.3. 3. We're going to enter in now a little bit more than what we've entered into. And then next Sunday, there's, man, there's some real exciting scriptures we're going to enter into as well in this context. Hallelujah. John 3, 3. The scripture says, Jesus said unto Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. 
What are we talking about? We're talking about seeing the kingdom of God by revelation. Amen? Glory to God. When you read the scripture, that you can do the works that Jesus did. That's seeing the kingdom of God. You really see that. Man, you see yourself doing those things. But in John 3, 5, here's the reason this seeing is so important. Jesus says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water, that's a natural birth, and of the Spirit of God, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. See, God causes you to see things through the written word so you can enter into it. Amen? And see, that sounds so simple, but it's so exciting. You can't enter into what you don't see. You can't enter into what, you can't enter into faith opposed to what you have hope for. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If I don't have a hope for something, I can't have faith to fill it. So if, if I don't have a hope <clears throat> that I can win souls, I'm not going to have faith to win souls. But if I see myself winning souls because the word of God says I'm a soul winner, it's going to change everything. All right. Now there's a lot that we're going to try to enter into here. <clears throat> You know, Jesus in these last days is trying to help all of us. You know, the, the book, Heaven is for Real, the movie. I don't know how many ever read that or saw the movie. That's powerful. Little boy goes to heaven, amen? Man, and just, man, why did God do that? It's a sign, amen, to help us. I believe in that. That's powerful. Man, it encouraged my faith. And uh, there's a book, 23 Minutes in Hell. I don't know if you ever read that book. It, it, it'll scare you. Honestly, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, and I'll bring some wisdom to you. I tell you, it's, it's scary. <clears throat> a man, God took away his cognizance of being saved. He entered into hell, feeling like he was a sinner, and the things he experienced were, it all, all goes with the word of God, but Jesus let him experience hell so he could help the church in the context of its reality. Wow. But you see, that's like a gift of the Spirit. That's to help us. And I, But man, when you enter into the Word of God, you can come to a place where you can know heaven's for real, hell's for real, and you can experience it through the Word of God. And that's what we're going to get into a little bit today and as we have, have time. But the, the, all of that's real. <clears throat> I have a, there's a man, Howard Pittman. We had him at a church uh, a few years ago. When I was... I don't, I'd been saved about four or five years. I, I, Kathy and I were newly married, and uh, we are in uh, Clearfield, and we came down one Sunday, and uh, <clears throat> Day Spring, where I'm ordained from, he was speaking at the church, and I, I met him there, and I'd met him one other time he'd spoke at the church. And, and uh, this guy's just amazing, but he died... He had aneurysm busted. He was running for political office down in North Carolina. And uh, he stood before Jesus. And man, and he wasn't, you know, uh, saved. And wow, thought he was or wasn't. And, and, and God in his mercy sent him back to say, you know what, this is for real. And uh, can I don't remember, we had, he spoke here. We went and had uh, dinner with him at a, a restaurant right down from our house. And man, when he talks, you can tell. He stood before the judgment seat of God. He was resurrected from the dead. And uh, I mean, we're talking, you could tell. I mean, it was for real. And uh, <clears throat> oh man, just a real deal. But see, this is how God wants us to enter in and walk. Because sometimes you don't feel like the spirit realm is for real. You don't feel like Jesus is for you. It doesn't look like Jesus is for you. You don't feel like you can conquer the world. You don't feel like you can win souls. <clears throat> but when you enter into this, because it's so real, and you know if you mix your faith, this reality reigns, that's when you're going to reign in life, praise God. Amen? As a believer. Glory to God. So experiences are powerful, and they help us. But God wants us to experience the word of God first and foremost so the experiences come out of your faith 
that you've entered into through the word of God. Glory to God. I, mean, I can share a number of examples where supernatural experiences, and, and man, they're good. God wants us to have them. I, I've shared this different times, but there's repetition. I was with somebody, a young guy, must have been like about 20. I, in state college area, I knew the, well, I didn't, I knew the pastor somewhat, not real well. Really, but someone I knew real well, knew him. He called me up. His grandson was living in sin and uh, wasn't a good deal in sexual sin. And so I met him at his grandfather's church and shared with him all the scriptures. Didn't seem to be making any headway. And really was kind of frustrated and tired and about ready to give it up. And uh, I just looked over to my left and I, I saw Jesus. Wasn't it? I just saw Jesus. And he was just in a contorted fashion. And it was like, almost like someone having a convulsion. Just really, I, I thought, what on earth? And he was weeping. And then I picked up, okay, this is the, him being affected by this young man's sin. It's like, wow. So I never expected that in a million years. And I never said anything to the young man. I didn't say one thing. Because usually I want people to pick things up for themselves. Amen. It's one thing for you to pick it up and tell somebody, but it's another thing for them to pick it up themselves. Amen? So I, I never said a thing. I didn't say, I saw Jesus here. I didn't say, Jesus is here. You know what I'm saying? I didn't say anything. And so I, I didn't say anything. And I, I mean, within seconds, he was on a, um, I, I was on the, like on the altar, and he was on like one of the benches. It was an older church. And he ran, but he ran right down to where I saw Jesus. And I mean, just consecrated his life to Jesus. And he's walking with Jesus today. But man, see, that's real, isn't it? But see, when you get into the written word, here's what's so powerful. See, you can see, when you're in the end of the word, you can fellowship with Jesus out of knowing this whenever you want. When you, get, when you read a scripture verse, you can see Jesus whenever you want. I remember when the... Uh, <clears throat> revival was going on and there was a lot of laughter What about Tor Toronto revival and that was good I believe in revivals and people were coming back and they'd be laughing in the spirit and that was good spirit of God would come on them and I told somebody I said I got something better than that oh we went to Toronto it was good you know I, I, I said I believe in that but I said you know what something's even better than that they said no I said inward faith because you know what's exciting I don't have to wait for the spirit of God to come to laugh I can laugh whenever I want I can laugh at the devil whenever I want. I can laugh for joy whenever I want. Amen? By faith. So let's look at an example of this. And let's go with me to Luke 15. I know all of us know this story of the prodigal son. But let's just use this as an example. And let's, let's <clears throat> then apply. I'm going to try to apply this to our lives. <clears throat> and we'll just see how far we get. <clears throat> I just said it's Jesus right now. Luke 15. Verse 11, we know the story of the prodigal son. Man had two sons. The one younger son comes in, says, you know what? I want my inheritance. And you know what? In the natural, why would anybody give him the inheritance when you know he's in rebellion and what he's going to do with your hard-earned money? <clears throat> and one of my kids come in and said, and I, just pretend I had a million dollars. And they said, you know what? I want my inheritance. I would look at him and said, really? <laughs> I would have said, I don't care how old you are. Get to your room and, 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 you know, and then when you get, and just ask the Lord to help you to get rid of, you know, stupid. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and then maybe we'll talk a little bit. Amen? <clears throat> when you come to your senses. Amen? I, that's what I would have done. Well, this man representing God knew what he was going to do with that money. He was going to spend it on harlots and drugs and everything else. But yet he gave him the money because he knew it was going to help him come into salvation. Amen? Now, we know that he entered into a bad way. I mean, finally came to his senses in a pig pen and said, you know what? Even the hired servants in my father's house are taken care of better than I am right now. So he comes 
towards the house. And what happens? He's expecting to be rebuked. He's expecting to, uh, you know, be condemned. Thanks, Brad. And uh, what happens? The father runs to him. Isn't that amazing? The father runs to him. He's obviously been waiting for him, praying for him, interceding for him. Man puts a ring on his hand, changes his, vest, his vestments. Wow. Now, see, it's one thing to read that. It's another thing to see Jesus in an abiding way through it. Glory to God. So this is where the tower hits the road. So I know this is spiritually discerned, but listen to me, if you would. <clears throat> See, a lot of people read this and they say, wow, that's neat. That shows God's mercy, right? And that's really good. But at the beginning of the year, we said that God spoke and said he's going to bring us from the 30 to 60, 60 to 100 fold. When you see, see, when you enter in to really knowing what the word's supposed to do, that's when you have a tremendous advantage. When you say, God, whatever I read here, I'm going to see, I'm, I'm going to be able to see you in my spirit, man, and enter in to relationship with you this way. So it's one thing to say, yeah, I know this scripture. It's another thing to say, I know it in a way that I can go to anyone, anywhere, at any time and share with them the heart of God towards them if they're in a backslidden condition. And when I mess up, I can go before God and knowing that even as I'm getting ready to ask for forgiveness, God has already beaten me to the punch and has already taken my hand, ready to release me, amen, from my sin and deliver me and help me. But see, to actually enter into it, Lord, you know, we shared, uh, I think last week, of uh, well, Jackie Pollinger. She has a church in Hong Kong. Now Kathy's been in the church. And uh, <clears throat> just amazing ministry. If you haven't read her book, Chasing the Dragon, <clears throat> it's one of the greatest mission books I've ever read. But she had a heart for people that, gang members, she was only, what, 1920? She was from England. And she went to the walled city and just this horrendous place. Now it's not even exist. They tore it down. But the worst gangs around and half the people on heroin. And see, it's one thing to read this verse. It's another thing to go to somebody and say, you know what? God is so awesome. He's given you his only begotten son. And these people, they've never heard the gospel. They don't even know. What do you mean? They have no clue. But to be able to go to them and say, you know what? Your felt need is this. You're hooked on heroin. Chasing the dragon is just a synonym in that culture for being hooked on heroin. You accept Jesus. You get filled with the spirit. Pray in other tongues. And God, in his love and mercy, is going to cause you to kick this most of the time without with no withdrawal, and Jesus is going to come. She got so confident because she started, see, she knew the heart of God to scriptures like this. She saw Jesus coming to this prodigal son, and then she saw Jesus coming to the people she was working with. And I mean, nine times out of 10, there was no withdrawal. Someone's hooked on heroin for 20 years. Amen. So what happens is now the word, man, is not just something you believe in, but something that's so real. It's like having a vision. And then you start to live out what you know and see in an amazing way. <clears throat> Let's just give a couple more examples. <clears throat> we could give... An, there's just so much here. Glory to Jesus. There's just so much here. Let me, I have about 10 leaves, but let's just go to, for time's sake, let's just go to one more. Go with me to John 17, 26. 
<clears throat> seems to me wherever I start out, I enter up here, end up here in my quiet time. And, and <clears throat> Jesus. Well, you know what? I'm going to say, let me go to John 17, 23. It says, I and them <clears throat> and thou and me. That they may be made perfect. I'm reading New American Standard through oneness. That's just intimacy of relationship. I am them and thou me that they may be made perfect through oneness. And that the world, that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. <clears throat> For some reason I feel led to give this example. I was going to give another example, but this comes to me. So this is saying out of intimacy... There is wholeness. Perfection in this context means wholeness. Oneness means intimacy. We've shared this so many times. Oneness can mean three things depending on the context. It can mean deity, John 10, 30. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. Obviously, it has nothing to do with us. It can mean unity, Ephesians 4, that we might be one. And then it can be intimacy, and, as in this context. So it says, where there's intimacy... There's wholeness, right? Wow. I mean, that's simple. Isn't that powerful? I've got intimacy with the king of the universe. We're intimate. We're one. Just like my wife and I, we're one. When we got married, our spirits became one. 1 Corinthians 6, 17 says, he who's joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. We're one. <clears throat> but this takes it further. It says where there's oneness, where there's intimacy, there's wholeness. Glory to God. See, this is where I get excited because if this book was just about having something to teach for Sunday school, preach at church, and it wouldn't mean nothing to me. But this is Jesus. It, again, causes knowing and seeing. Say this with me. The Word of God causes knowing in my spirit and causes me to see Him in my spirit. So reality can take place. Whew. So let me give an example. <clears throat> About seven years ago, my daughter is pregnant with our first grandchild. And I found out that, I don't know, he's like, she's like six months pregnant. She, got, she has a bad report. And that his um, one kidney is so big it's about ready to explode. No, he's, he's about four months in the womb. I'm sorry. I, I have the picture of the sonogram. And his kidney's so big, it could explode. <clears throat> and they got to take the baby. The baby's not going to have any chance of survival. <clears throat> because if the kidney explodes, it's a perianitis could set in, she could die. Well, bottom line is this. What do you do in a situation like this? See, here's what most people do. I'm, I'm going I'm to play church. Most people pray, hoping that God will help them. And that's good, but that's not best. Most people die praying. Ask God for a verse. The word of God is a bridge between the natural realm and the spirit realm. So the spirit realm could come into your natural realm and cause the spirit realm to reign, the kingdom of heaven to reign where you're at in your time of need. Amen. This verse came to me and said where there's intimacy, there's wholeness. I begin to claim that with my wife, claim it with different people, claim it with glory to God. Man, so she had to get a, 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 another sonogram, usually sonograms five minutes. Took an hour down in Pittsburgh. Bottom line is this, I, I was able, you know, I, I went with her and uh, and see, here's the exciting thing. I saw him whole because I'm intimate with Jesus. She's intimate with Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Her and her husband now have two children. They're intimate with Jesus. Amen. We're intimate with Jesus. Not because of my works, but because of the blood of Jesus and because I'm following Jesus. There's both. I'm intimate with Jesus by his grace and mercy. So this verse says, if I'm intimate with Jesus, then I've got wholeness. 
So I, I said, you know, I've, tell, I've told those closest to me, you have to watch who you talk to. There will be a good report. Now we've got the sonogram of the kidney ready to explode. And we go down there and they do, man, takes like an hour down in Pittsburgh. And uh, doctor came out. I said, well, we have doc. He said, you know what you have? He said, you got a perfect sonogram. He said, I never saw a sonogram so perfect. He said, I don't know what they saw up there, but it's a totally different deal. Now, I, I, glory to God, hurt Isaac's, you know, seven years old and glory to God and hurt her husband, you know, have two awesome kids. But the bottom line is this. This is real. I need it to be more real. I want to enter in the fullness. But see, you take a verse that the Holy Ghost brings to you. Not so you can have something to teach a Sunday school or to win a doctor in an argument with. But so you can partake of Jesus. Where there's intimacy, oneness. Jesus said there is perfection, wholeness. Shh. And you know what that last part says? That the world may know. That you and the world may know that I sent my son and love them as much as I love him. See, things like that cause you to tell people about Jesus. Amen? The body of Christ first in the world. Glory to God. Father, we just receive in Jesus' name. Lord, I believe as Brother Kenneth Hagin said, one scripture verse believed can make you a spiritual giant. Well, we know we need the whole counsel of God, Father. But help us to see, God, the one scripture. Now, we need, Lord, all of them, but it can do so much. Father, help us to enter into the reality of this so heaven and earth can be bridged, even as it has been by the blood, so we can enter into the truth, Father God, to the truth that the kingdom of heaven has come, How's it come? Through the blood of Jesus and through the written word. Entering into a born again spirit that causes us to know and to see so we can enter into the kingdom. To your glory, honor, and praise. The devil says that's too easy. Whenever he says that, you know he's under your feet and he's destroyed. It's through the blood of Jesus. It's through the Spirit of God. It's through the written word. It's by grace, by mercy. 